So after binge watching uh, the Netflix series Stranger Things these last two days, I finally concluded tonight, and it's around 1.03 a.m. <laughs> Pacific time, and I gotta say, I really like this series. I think Netflix has another hit on their hands. I think a lot of people are just waiting for season two. Now, for this review, I want to do a review with non-spoilers, and then we're going to get into the spoiler territory since I got a little bit more more time now after the strike is done. Um, but right from the get-go, this is a, of course, original Netflix, Netflix series, which is kind of crazy to say an original Netflix series because there's a lot of shows, uh, I want to say shows, but films that are really inspired from this series i mean you could think there's i mean first thing that comes to mind one of the visuals in this series is it's an all black void at one point during the show and um it really reminded me of um the one with scarlett johansson i think it's called skins or something like that it really reminded me of that film really remind me of that film and that film is already weird and strange as it is so that kind of reminded me of that film with scarlett johansson especially with that void uh of course another one is the goonies another one is um i got alien from here so there's a lot of things in this show that really harkens back to a lot even gremlins i mean i got a little bit of gremlin vibe on this show as well there's a lot of things in this show that really borrows from a lot of sci-fi and horror films, which they they really, what's really cool is the nostalgia of it, the nostalgia factor that they really present in here, and I that really I really dug that, I really like that. So Stranger Things is a TV series. It is uh, produ- It is by Netflix. It is created by the Duffer Brothers. Now the Duffer Brothers, um, at first I thought like there was a Stephen King reference through the series, and I was like maybe this was done by Stephen King, but it wasn't done by Stephen King. Uh, it's starring Winona Ryder. Now Winona Winona Ryder's gotten pretty old. I mean, in this series, she looks. I mean, we all know Renona Ryder, and of course that one incident. But she's age. She's definitely age. But you know what? She really, really was good in this series. I mean, sometimes she was really over the top, but she was really, really good. She sold me. I didn't see Renona Ryder in that role. I just saw this actress playing a role, and I saw this mother who is looking for her son, her son. And that's basically what the story is about. It's basically about uh, her boy getting taken uh, by something, and she's trying to find him. And then her friends are trying to find him. I mean, everybody, the whole town is trying to find him. So it's really a search and rescue kind of type of film. But then it goes into more of the sci-fi elements and a, a lot of sci-fi elements. And I will really get into detail when it comes to spoilers. But this is also uh, starring David Harbour, Finn Hallward, Miley Bobby Brown. Um, this is the first season. There's only eight episodes, which I was really shocked when people were telling me, like, yeah, there's only eight episodes. You could binge watch it like nothing. I mean, I would have thought, you know, they would want to do 13 episodes of this and honestly eight episodes was enough to tell a story especially this kind of story uh the mystery evolved around it and everything uh so when the writer plays joyce but who i really like is david uh uh david who uh harbors character who plays chief jim hopper now jim hopper is he he is the you know the sheriff who has he has a little rebellious he's a sheriff he's a sheriff he has a little bit of past but he has like this rebellious side to him he's like he's he, he takes charge when he has to and what he does he's very he's a very smart detective um i really like this character a lot i mean he is your typical kind of macho kind of guy who He's, he's trying, he's diving into the truth of all the conspiracy that's surrounding him. But I really like this character. Uh, what I really thought, too, was the kids. The kids, you had Mike, you had uh, Eleven, of course. You had um, Dustin, Lucas, um, even Nancy, Jonathan. Like, the kids, the younger cast was really, they really did a great job with their acting. I think everybody did a stellar job with their acting. There was points in the series when I was watching, I was like, I was trying to say, oh, ew, that that didn't deliver right, or, oh, no, nah, the acting's not that great. No, the acting is really solid throughout the eight episodes. So I really got to, uh, especially with kids, you know how kids are, and sometimes they can get annoying and stuff but they really stepped up their game and i really i i think these uh young actors really just 
delivered. They really, you know, they took this big series and it honestly, this series could have been a failure. This series could have been just a straight sci-fi channel kind of series, but no, they really did, uh, the directors, the people who wrote this, I mean, uh, the brothers that wrote this, I mean, they really took their time to really put some love and effort into this series. And I think the it, this really brings it up a level because of the acting. I think Winona Ryder's acting is really great. I think um, uh, David Harbour's acting is up there as well. I really love the chemistry between him and Winona. Uh, and all the kids. The kids, you have to like the kids, or this whole series is going to go kaput. And I like the kids. I really did like the kids. I thought the kids were actually, you know, they were in, in, I enjoyed watching them when it was time for their parts. It's very interesting for the series because there's so different, so many different tones, so many different things going on. Uh, where you think it's a Goonies movie, then you think it's a sci-fi movie, then you think it's a horror movie, and you do get a lot of elements of that. Um, I even got tremors from this. Just saying. Um, but they really balance it really, really well. When it's time for that Goonies kind of type of scenery, it goes well with the kids. It, when it's time for a horror aspect, it really goes well when it needs to be done. So they, when they start introducing a lot of these different elements and a lot of different uh, genres into it, honestly, it, it, they blend it really well. They balance it really well. And that's what I really like about the series. This I keep mentioning a lot of different movies that they are inspired to or that I came away with saying, yeah, they, they definitely used a lot of those elements from this film and this film, but it's still able to maneuver its way out of that kind of frame and to really stand on its own. And I think that's because of the acting. I think that's because of the characters. And I think that's because of the beauty of the film. I think the film is definitely independent. You could tell it's independent, but it's it's shot really well. It's directed really well. The story, the, the stories really go in great pacing. The editing is, is really well done as well. The only thing I could really complain is certain, the certain mystery that we uncover. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to give too much away. Uh, there's a, there's one big complaint that I think I'll say to the spoilers, but I do have a complaint and that's really a d design wise than anything. And of course, I think the ending could have been just a little bit better, but I think they really are setting for a season two. So that's why I don't really kind of diss it too much, not diss it, but bring it down too much because it really does feel like a setup for a season two and they have to set up something if they're going to really continue this series, which I'm all for. I mean, I would love it for a season two. Um, it'd be interesting how they do a season two, but there was st there's still a lot of questions that are not really answered at the end of the first season. So there's going to be a season two. Um, the decade that I believe it's taking place in 1984, I think that's a great time to start this story and what it is like i can't give away too much when with the non-spoiler because i think i want you guys to really get into the show and really start watching it because i came into it blinded like i don't know what this i just heard people talking about it, like oh you should watch this i'm like all right i'll watch it and it's only eight episodes fine i'll watch it and as i watched it, i didn't know what i was getting myself into so i think that's the beauty of the show is the less you know going into this show the better the results are going to be at the end where you're going to probably end up really liking it. And I really, really liked this series. I thought it was great. Is it my favorite Netflix series? No. Is it one of the better Netflix series that, that have been produced? Hell yeah, it is. It's one of a, it's a solid, solid series. It really, I really like the 80s type of vibe. I really like the nostalgia type of vibe. But not only that, I really just like overall how much heart was put into the series and how much mystery, that mystery, that mystery yet adventure that we got mixed with a lot of different genres. That's what I miss from a lot of things in TV or movies. So I really do like that they really just, it's simple you've seen this story before but they really did execute it quite well and that's the beauty of it the execution when siri when people do things that you've seen before the execution has to be right on point and i think it was right on point for this series um i think the villains the villain is a little bit cookie cutter or we just don't know too much of the villain uh i think a lot like i said i, think I like a lot of the characters that are in this series I uh, thought the acting was stellar. I thought the cinematography was very, very beautiful, especially when there's one point using Christmas lights in this series. In this uh, series, I thought it was, the cinematography was very, very beautiful. Um, the one characters that stand out, there is a romance in here, uh, which I, I guess I'll get into spoiler territory on what I thought uh, 
some of these characters and the romance factor in here. Um, but let's just say that uh, I, I felt the romance in here. <laughs> I'm just saying I felt the romance and what was going on in here. Um, so overall, I do believe you should check out Stranger Things. I think it's a really great series. It's another solid Netflix series. It came out of nowhere, actually, and it just, like, it blew my mind how actually really, really good it was. And it is a really, really good series. Uh, there is... There is a lot of things that sometimes you just have to like go with, uh, especially with a lot of elements that is in this series. But I do like those type of elements. I mean, there is one point there's telepathy and like telepathy. Well, we already got this thrown in here. So why is this thrown in here? So uh, but I think it balances all well. It's very, very well balanced. Do I think it's 100 percent clean? Like just, oh, my God, watching it every day. No, but for a series that came like this it, it, for a eight episode just seems like very independent series it was super well done it kind of reminded me like i was reading a book honestly so uh like you know one of those books like those detective kind of books which i really like uh, it's great to see move away from a lot of like the comic book and all that stuff uh and just get into this type get into the gritty and get back to like, like legit sci-fi but adventure as well so I do recommend Stranger Things. Now, if you want to stick around, I will be talking more spoilers and getting a little bit more detail and in-depth to a lot of the characters and a lot of things I did like and a lot of things I dislike um, to really give you a picture. So if you've seen Stranger Things, this is the type of this this is the time for you to listen to what I have to say. But if you guys have not seen Stranger Things, I do recommend you go check it out right away. It's on Netflix, only eight episodes, and it's not even that long. I think when I looked at the time it was like 45 minutes each episode. So it's not that long uh as you would think. So thank you guys. Go ahead and subscribe to that channel. But to those who want to hear spoilers Spoiler alert, you have been warned. Now, I decided to make it just one video because I'm super tired and, you know, I just got done watching it. So I have a lot of things I want to really clarify. And um, so we're into the spoiler discussion. So you have been warned. Let's start talking spoilers. The ending I liked, but I feel like uh, just because I know they're going to make a season two, if, it, if there was a... Like, if I didn't know they were going to make a season two, because, come on, they're going to make a season two. If I didn't know they were going to make a season two, that ending would have been horrible. Like, I, I just, I would have believed, like, really, you have to end it at a bad note. Why do you have to end it at a bad note? And, of course, I'm talking about, I believe, um, Mike. Three. Uh, I, th I think it's Mike. Or is it Will? I think it's Will. Uh I get him confused. Will. Um, yeah. So Will is in the bathroom and he's he's uh, like kind of spitting out like he spits out like a little like slug thing in the drain. So um, a lot of theories are saying that maybe that's, you know, another incarnation of what we got from that little that that beast, that monster that we've had in the throughout the series or, you know, something else is happening. Um but I felt like, come on, really? I mean, another one of those, like, just ending on a good note. And there we go. Solid season one. Now, a lot of people would think, now going into the romance real quick, a lot of people would think that I'd be pissed that Jonathan does end up with Nancy. Uh, quite contraire. Like, listen, Nancy's boyfriend, who is, he, he's, a, he's a dick, all right? He's a dick. But I knew throughout the series, like, you know what? He's a dick, but there's, like, good morals in him like when we're going through the series like he's he's still being somewhat of a gentleman but i know he wants to get in nancy's pants but then again he's like it's it's wishy-washy it's like not a clear-cut boyfriend who's super douchey and doesn't have any good morals um at all type of scenario it wasn't like that i knew throughout the series like you know this yeah he is somewhat of a dick you know especially to jonathan but he's not really hardcore like he's not a straight out douchebag like this guy actually has some morals like he actually really he seems like he actually generally cares for nancy uh he seems like he just you, you can tell he has some he has a heart and I, I was i was right i was right at the very end like oh he, first of all he you know he got rid of his two douchebag of a friends you know the chick and the guy like those two were horrible there was no way people were like that right like horrible people like absolutely horrible people they should have been eaten um he cleans the slut, you know, slut wheeler, or whatever, on the mood. He, he actually says, can I help? After getting his ass kicked by Jonathan. And he does, what, when he was leaving and he was getting in that car, I was like, 
this motherfucker, I I said that, no, dude, I defended you, and now you're leaving. But I was like, wait, wait, no, no, no. Is he coming back in the house? And he does. He comes back in the house, and he helps fight off the beast. Uh, he helps Jonathan and Nancy. Uh, so that's when I knew that the ending, ending that Nancy was going to end up with um, her you know, boyfriend and not Jonathan. Because he did. He kind of came and saved the day. He saved their asses. And as much... I think in season two, that's going to be different. I think Nancy is starting to realize that she's really in love with Jonathan because of the fact that it's like people see it, but she doesn't want to really say it. You know, she doesn't really want to go for it, even though other people are saying like, dude, you you, like, have you told him? Like he's in love with you. And then like her little brother could already tell that, you know, you're, you're, do you, you like Jonathan, huh? You like Jonathan. Um, and then, of course, that little kiss at the end on his cheek and then a the little look. Uh, it really, and you know, she goes back to her boyfriend when he's sitting on the, with the ugly sweater, uh, sitting down watching TV. And he asks, like, did you get it? And that, of course, that was the camera. Um, you could just tell that, you know, she's, she's not as happy as she would be if she was with Jonathan. So I think season two, uh, I think they really laid the groundwork for season one between for that relationship to build and i i'm super happy that they didn't just if they're doing a season two i'm super happy they didn't just go straight for jonathan and nancy at the end of the season one because you know this guy this like i said nancy's boyfriend he he's not too big of a douchebag i mean he does have great morals so we're gonna see a season two if that morals uh keeps up or he gets back in his bad ways but I don't see those two staying together. Uh, I think Jonathan and Nancy will be together. That's why I'm not too worried about that romance element to it. But I really did like Jonathan, other than the fact that that was creepy, right? That was pretty fucking creepy, that he was still taking pictures of her when she was about to make sweet love. Uh, Took pictures of Barb, took pictures of the party. Even though at first he was trying to take pictures, you know, where his brother was. I still thought that was super, super creepy. But, you know, I started, I think everybody started, like, to really like Jonathan, even though he is a creep. Uh, And I do, I like Jonathan. I think Jonathan, um, he really, he, he did explain why he took pictures and all that stuff, but... Yeah, like in the real world, yeah, no. And then a lot of what I said in my non-spoiler review is you have to really go for it. You have to go with it. This story is because a lot of times, like, you have the kids running away. You know, you have Eleven. You have fucking um, Lucas. uh, You have, you know, you have all the kids running away from the government. The government would have got their ass, like, like that. Especially if, if Eleven has telepathic telepathic powers like they're getting them akira big influence to akira i mean every everything that has telepathy i think is a lot is influenced by akira but of course there's probably akira is influenced by something else um there's in akira they they find tetsuo all right they find tetsuo countless times so i think 11 would have been found out pretty soon now the monsters uh this was the one complaint i had about this show was the monsters i think the monsters look too much like tremors when it comes to the face uh, i think design wise they could have gave me a little better uh definitely a better design but they did not uh, i don't think it was horrible but sometimes there were some scenes where the cgi it looked like a sci-fi channel kind of movie and that's bad uh, i think they need to fix that i think they really need to fix the design wise maybe they can do an alternate design because it really i really felt like tremors honestly and um on just the human body and i didn't i didn't really I didn't really dig the monsters. I think they work. They work. They work. But they definitely work when they're not seen. And, you know, you can see a lot of things, them coming out of the wall and everything. But when you actually see them, I think it doesn't work. So this is another thing where don't show me. I am I get more entertained than show me. And then I'm kind of bored with it. So that, that kind of deal. Like Jaws. You know, you never see the shark until the very end. And we didn't see these things really until the very end. But design-wise, uh. all right. Elephant in the room. There's I, I I haven't even like looked at any like the news and all that stuff about Barb. <laughs> People are upset about Barb dying. I absolutely knew Barb was going to bite the dust. I knew Barb was going to die, and I knew uh, what's the name? Will was it Will? Yeah, I knew Will was going to live. I mean, come on, it's a kid. <laughs> it's a kid. Barb. Um, it sucks, you know. It honestly, it's Nancy's fault that she died, cause all Barb wanted to do was go home, and fucking Nancy, all she wanted to do was make sweet love. But 
you know, Barb died, and I it's uh, I just knew she was dead. I'm like, she's dead. Come on, she she was dead. She was gone. She was dead. Uh, Eleven's father at the end. Do I think he's dead? Uh, a lot of spir- uh, conspiracies. A lot or not conspiracies. A lot of theories are saying that he's not dead because nobody. Uh, he's probably still alive. Crap, blue's hair. Damn it, blue. My dog's hair. Um, so. I think he might be still alive too because we didn't see a body and they didn't, they didn't really um, showcase anything. Like there was, I'm surprised we didn't really get a lot of the dead bodies going on. And you know what? What really upset me was the fact that we saw Hopper and um, Joyce in the little in another dimension, and they didn't really show them how to how the hell they got out of there. I mean, I would think it a little bit be more difficult just walking out you know is there more of these things like what's going on here uh another thing about hopper at the ending of conclusion of the series was the fact that he gets in the car what did he talk about why is he still a free man i thought they're gonna just you know they could have killed him honestly but uh what what and then at first when he was going to the snow i thought and you know he was meeting up with 11 or seeing how 11's doing because 11's still alive with maybe her mother i don't know i thought something like that i mean he left food right there i don't think that was for his dead daughter uh, i think that was like an actual like thing where 11 can come and eat so i mean um was that an ego it might have been an ego uh but yeah i'm just like confused I want to know, what the hell did Hopper talk about here? Uh, of course, that was the same guy, you know. Uh, I think that guy has been throughout the series where he's been talking to. Uh, he, he was talking to him, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the whole deal is that. I can't really answer that question until, like, season two hits because to season two is the one that has all these different kind of tie-ins and um, questions. Now, Eleven. I really like Eleven. I really like her telepathic, uh, telepathic powers that, in the beginning like i was like what the hell is, who is this kid is, is that a girl it looks like a boy uh, that was kind of funny when they put the wig on um I, th- I thought the kid with no teeth was hilarious too uh i thought he was cool though i thought that kid really held his own uh acting wise i thought he was really good um but 11 like 11 yeah really grew on me i mean especially 11 and uh, i believe mike is a mike yeah, Mike, uh, I liked Levin and Mike's relationship. You know, Mike is getting a little bit too, com- he's getting comfortable with Levin. You know, she was as a, as a, probably a girlfriend. So I really like what's going on there. Uh, Lucas is Lucas, Lucas is the charismatic one. Dustin. Oh no. Dustin's the one with the teeth. So Lucas, I think it's Lucas. Lucas was a dick. <laughs> Lucas, man, that dude was hot-headed, uh, but he was right, you know, you don't really, I mean, you're trusting Eleven, I mean, stick to the plan, like, this dude was like, yeah, stick to the plan, what the hell are you guys doing, but he was a little bit like, come on, dude, he was a little bit too hot-headed on in this show, um, Dustin, I guess, was the the realistic one, I think, I think he was the more calm one, and Mike, too, was a little bit, like, this dude, like, would yell and shout all the time, especially to Eleven, like, what are you doing, this and that, uh, I was like, come on, dude. Uh, overall, like, um, this whole series, though, was really great. I mean, a lot of the moments were really great. I really did like the just little by little you're uncovering, like, what's going on. Because that's what it is, man. You're just, like, first episode, you're just like, what it the hell is going on? Second episode, you're like, okay. And then you're starting to start to find out there might be another dimension and this and that um i really like the uses of the christmas lights i thought that was fantastic i really like winona's writer's character and how she put the alphabetical um letters on the wall where uh, mike could talk to her or will could talk to her so i really liked all that aspect to it um i liked a lot of the um the kids scenes as well i thought the kids scenes were very adventurous and really cool too uh, especially with 11 uh, especially going into school you know trying and try to communicate to will um so i liked i liked a lot of elements the only thing too is like where are the parents where the where's lucas and dustin parents just saying where, where are their parents at uh i thought the dad i thought the wheelers the, the dad daddy wheeler was just a like he's such a douche i mean even nancy said like yeah he just kind of married you know my mom and my mom doesn't even really love my dad honestly so that was kind of uh jonathan's dad was a douche too so there's a little common commonality right there uh the little two little kids man little bastards i'm sorry they're little fuckers you know the dude fucking had a switchblade yeah a switchblade and he had it on dustin's throat like these kids were 
evil, man. These kids, I, I was like, I did not feel sorry when Eleven broke that kid's arm. Now, Eleven, um, she killed a lot of people. <laughs> she killed a lot of people in this series. I just gotta say, she killed a lot of people. Uh, at the ending scene where she had the military and she was like, she blows up like the inside of the head. I'm like, oh my god, she's about to go Akira. She's about to go Akira. And their heads are about to explode. I mean, I was gonna, I was just waiting for that moment, you know. Um, but overall, like, there's not too much to really talk because I'm getting tired here. But um, I really did like a lot of the elements on the in the show. Like I said, uh, the design for the creature could have been better. CGI some places could have been better. Um, where are the parents? You know, there's a lot of questions, realistic questions to say uh why are these kids so evil there's a lot of cliche characters still especially with the um nancy's boyfriend's friends and of course the little kids who pick on the other you know will or uh, mike and all them dustin and all that stuff um but it was very interesting and also the scientific question about um 11 and 11 how she's able to go into this dimension and like it, it, it's kind of funky and kind of odd and it kind of doesn't really make sense honestly how she's able to go into that other dimension by using water and all this stuff i know that they explain it but i'm just like it still doesn't feel right uh but overall it's it's a great solid series i really had a good time um i know a lot of people weren't as happy for the ending as um i was satisfied with the ending i think there's gonna be season two that's why i'm not too uh, critical on it but overall i think uh, stranger things is a fantastic series to watch actually uh it's definitely i don't think it's the greatest netflix series that's out there but it's definitely one of the best ones one of the good ones out there at least one of the good ones um but as a netflix original the netflix is doing it doing its job with the television shows i don't know about the rates but uh, overall but good series it was a good series i really enjoyed it and um I can't wait for season two, honestly. I really can't wait for season two. It, If I had to compare it along the lines of, like, you know, what the fuckery or, like, what am I watching or overall, like, I want, I'm want, i excited for season two, I would compare it to Sense8. Sense8 is actually another great series that is like this where you it takes a while for you to, like, okay, this is where it's going. Um, so if I had to compare it to... If I had to, for the same love, I'd give it the same love to Sense8. And believe me, like, I'm ready for Sense8 Season 2. I want to see Sense8 Season 2 so bad. A lot of great characters in that show. A lot of great relationships formed. While uh, Stranger Stranger Things, like, same thing. Great characters. A lot of questions still to be answered. And you want to see a lot of these characters not i mean if they left it right here it'd be fine but i would love to see a lot of these characters progress and see where they're at maybe a year from now so thank you guys for listening i'm dan making now son you can always find more videos on my youtube channel don't forget to like comment subscribe thank you we're done talking about stranger things